TV Channel 4, St. Louis. What is the most serious problem facing you and me and all of us in America today? What is our greatest challenge? Good afternoon. I'm Parker Wheatley, and this is Challenge again. Whether or not you have children in high school, you know that the high schools are very important to you. They either send our boys and girls out into the communities directly to be good citizens and workers we trust, or they send them on to further and higher education and eventual leadership in our communities. But the question often is asked, do we need both public and private high schools to do these important jobs? So today, Challenge places the Catholic high school, the Catholic high school, on trial. Another exploration planned for you by the four great school systems in the city and county, the Catholic and Lutheran private schools, the city and county public schools. To represent the Catholic high school today, is Father James T. Curtin, Superintendent of High Schools, the Archdiocese of St. Louis, Attorney for the Catholic High School, Richard J. Meehan, Attorney for the Public, John E. Barget, and Judge Frank P. Motherway. Judge Motherway, the Catholic High School is on trial, and the case is yours. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, You've been summoned to this court and impaneled as a jury to hear the evidence in a lawsuit styled The Catholic High School versus John Q. Public. The issues before this court in this lawsuit involve the establishment of the Catholic High School throughout the United States. You will hear testimony on the purpose for which these high schools have been established, on the work that is being accomplished by these private sectarian schools. After the evidence has been offered to the court, the attorneys for both parties will argue the issues before you. I will then give you directions on behalf of the court, and you will then retire to your jury room for your deliberations and for the rendering of a proper verdict. Mr. Meehan, you're the attorney for the proponent, the Catholic High School, Will you please proceed with the examination of your witness? Thank you very much, Your Honor. Will you state your name, please? Father James T. Curtin. What is your profession, Father Curtin? I am a priest of the uh, Roman Catholic Church of the Arch Archdiocese of St. Louis. At the present time, I am engaged in school work as superintendent of Catholic high schools. How long have you been in that work as an educator, Father? Since approximately 1948. What position do you hold in the administration of the Archdiocese at this time? Well, that as superintendent of Catholic High School is a position of general administration of the uh, total high school program, similar to that of uh, uh, the superintendent of public schools, Mr. Hickey, or any one of the county superintendents. I see. Father, do you uh, belong to any national organizations that are concerned with the problem of the high school? Uh, I am a member of the National Catholic Educational Association, uh, I hold membership in the NEA through the American Association of uh, uh, School Officials. I hold membership in the National Organization for Secondary School Principals, both NEA. I'm a member of uh, the National Catholic Music Educators Association. I'm, executive, I'm on the board of directors with the uh, St. Louis, St. Louis County White House Conference, and I also several local organizations. I see. Father, some of those organizations are not Catholic organizations. Would you tell me why you belong to those organizations? Well, the NEA and the White House Conference uh, uh, are not Catholic. They're not, they're not sectarian. And I, I belong because I believe that uh, all of us have to be interested in education, the total education of the whole community. And these people certainly are uh, professional, well-intentioned, and do a lot of good. I can benefit from what they have to offer, and I hope that I can make some contribution. I see. Father, I'm going to talk to you today, as the judge has just outlined, about the Catholic high school. I want you to base your answers on your experience as an educator and an administrator for many years. 
Would you tell us what a, a child now who gets out of grade school and goes into a high school, a Catholic high school, uh, what does he find there when he enters the high school? Well, very simply, uh, Mr. Meehan, he finds exactly what he finds in the other high school, whether uh, it's in this locality or any other locality. He finds a, a school building very similar uh, uh, to the school buildings uh, elsewhere. As a matter of fact, uh, built of, uh, along the same lines. He finds the same type of study. He finds the same type of activity. He has his social life, his dances, his parties, his clubs. Uh, he has interscholastic athletics. He has uh, a chorus. He has an, uh, an orchestra. Uh, as a matter of fact, there is this a uh, certain sameness that runs through our high schools as run through the rest. And this is the first thing that strikes anyone who comes into a school. Well, I see, Father. Father Curtin, can you tell us how does a Catholic high school prepare a student for citizenship after he graduates, of course? Well, this is through a, a, a process of education where he is taught the, uh, the uh, basic fundamentals of uh, living in a democratic society by learning first what those principles are. He learns the the history of his country, he, he learns of his obligations to his country, he learns how those obligations are to be practiced, he learns what it means to be a responsible citizen the, the, through his uh, social studies courses. This is precisely the same as it is worked out in uh, any other school in the area. Well, does the uh, Catholic high school prepare students for uh, college work after graduation? Uh, again, uh, just as other high schools, there is uh, preparation for college and there is preparation for not college for students going into the community to make a living. Well, do you prepare students then who do not go to college so that they may take a place in the community, in the neighborhood, later on perhaps as a family member? This is man? a part of uh, general education. The student has to be prepared to take up his life in the community whether he goes to college or not. It's a part of the uh, general education of the young adolescent uh, to a point uh, uh, of uh, maturity or approaching maturity where he can be a responsible person an intelligent, responsible person, whether he goes to college or not. Well, Father, now, you've told us that the Catholic high school prepares a student uh, for uh, life in college, life in the community, life as a citizen, educates him. But what you've told us is that the Catholic high school does what any good high school in the community also does. Now, can you tell us what, in addition to that, a Catholic high school student receives when he goes to a Catholic high school? Well, this uh, comes to the very point, of course, of the existence uh, of our Catholic high schools. We believe uh, that a child has to be educated not just in the academic areas or in the social areas. We believe that the child has to be educated in his total personality. And that total personality for us includes this matter of his relationship with God, or what we call his moral education. That the child has a physical life, the child has an intellectual life. We believe, too, the child has a spiritual life. And if this is to be uh, uh, totally developed, then it must be totally developed within the framework, framework of the whole educational process itself and not be partialed out. Well, Father, how do you accomplish this uh, in your program or your curriculum? Uh, in various ways. Uh, some are rather difficult to explain. But first of all, we have a formal course in religion, which is taught every day. We have textbooks. We have uh, courses of study, which are designed for our students through four years of high school, where they are taught the fundamental truths concerning God and themselves. Well, Father, uh, are your uh, high schools staffed by a faculty that is comparable to uh, those found in other schools? Yes, uh, this is, uh, again, a, uh, a sameness that exists between our schools. Uh, our schools are accredited by, are accepted or approved by the University of Missouri and accredited, uh, approved by the North Central Association, which uh, agencies or official bodies set the standards for the acceptance or non-acceptance of teachers. So all of our teachers have degrees, all of our teachers have uh, the necessary hours required in pedag uh, pedagogy or methodology for teaching. They are as thoroughly qualified as any of the official agencies require. Well, uh, Father Curtin, is it possible now for your, uh, your Catholic high school to do what seems to be two jobs, to prepare a student for college or life in the, in the society as a, as a good citizen, and then this moral training is it possible for the school to do both? Uh, I would think so. As a matter of fact, this is the goal that we set before ourselves, to uh, train the child uh, in his intellectual, social, and physical life, as well as in his moral life. To, ch to train the child for a fruitful, uh, happy participation in community life, and also to participate as a moral, responsible person. Now, there is no conflict, there is no problem, as far as I can see, that uh, we can't do uh, both. 
The fact that other schools don't do both might constitute a problem because other schools are for, uh, can't by law bring in this moral training. I see. Just but how big, Father, is the uh, Catholic high school uh, in the United States? Uh, this year we have registered in Catholic high schools approximately 700,000 students. And that's throughout the whole of the country, is That's it? in all the states, Alaska and Hawaii. Now, the Catholic Church goes to a great deal of, of difficulty, a great deal of trouble, and the parents also to a great deal of expense in maintaining these schools. So, I would assume there must be a philosophy of education that seems to be different and yet very important. Uh, what is that philosophy of education, Father? Very simply and very uh, concisely, as concisely as I can uh, sum it up, it's simply that the school, as a formal institution of learning, must educate the whole child as we define that child. A child uh, of, uh, who is to be, a, or who is a member of this society, the so uh, society of this world, as the bishops have said, and a society of the next world. We must therefore give that child a, as perfect an education we can insofar as he is a human being and an, an education as perfect as we can insofar as he is a supernatural being or a spiritual being. I see. Father, thanks very much. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Meehan. Mr. Barger, you may proceed with your cross-examination of the witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Court, please. Father, when you take these children into your school, you take them at the high school level. That's what we're talking about here. Is that That's right, Mr. Barger. And would you tell us about how much does it cost per year to educate a student in your Catholic school? It varies a little bit, but uh, on the average, it uh, runs between $135 to $145 per student. But this is operational cost. This doesn't include capital outlay or replacement or debt service. And what's the comparative figure in the, in the public school system? I believe that the uh, public school systems uh, locally are running approximately $400. Well, Father, in this day and age, when you usually get what you pay for, wouldn't you think that the difference in the cost would indicate very strongly a difference in the quality of the education given with the public schools winning? I don't think we can make that comparison. We can't compare these two prices. Uh, the cost of public education includes, uh, uh, in the main, teacher salaries, which are perhaps the largest item in their budget. Our teacher salaries are considerably lower by reason of the fact that we have a subsidy given to us by members of the, of the religious communities, the priests, the sisters, and the brothers who teach in our schools. They don't receive a salary. They do this uh, for sustenance. Now then, Father, on the books that you use in your school, as a matter of fact, they're all slanted from the Catholic viewpoint on history and on every subject you teach, aren't they? Not at all. Most of our books uh, happen to be written by non-Catholic authors. We select a book only for the truth, which it, uh, it uh, presents to the student. A science book has to be a good science book. A mathematics book has to, has to teach math. And it must be a teachable book. It must have... Uh, uh, must meet the basic requirements for good methodology and good pedagogy. Now, Father, do you feel that it's in all fairness that it is fair to the children in an American and democratic way of life in a society such as we have to separate them in their teenage, in their teenagers, and to take some and put them in a Catholic school, others they are in a different school? Seems to me that that would work uh, to their detriment, that it wouldn't help them in their appreciation of their fellow human beings. I don't think, Mr. Barger, we're separating students that we're being, as it's called, divisive, taking students out of a community and placing them in uh, several types of institutions for education. I think what we're doing is exercising a right given to us under our Constitution and a right guarantee guaranteed us by the Supreme Court that parents may educate their children in any way that they see fit as long as that education is consistent with the democratic principle and our form of government. What we do is take the child in school and give him a total education, which we hope uh, by reason of the objectives we had, will make him a better citizen, will make him understand his uh, relationship to other members in the community. As a matter of fact, we exist in a, plural uh, a pluralistic society. Well, Father, the things that you pointed out right here now, they're exactly the same things that are the aims of education in the public schools, are they not? Except. Except what? The addition of this moral responsibility. Is moral it training. your position that the public schools don't teach, any, teach their students how to be good citizens? Not at all. They... Uh, uh, have been trying very desperately and have been somewhat successful in teaching a uh, moral and spiritual values, as they call it. However, they are unable to teach moral and spiritual values based upon religion, upon a definite notion of God. Therefore, they cannot bring God into the classroom and establish him as the 
uh, the goal, the, uh, the, the absolute to which all morality must be referred. Well, then, when you get down to it, the difference seems to be that you teach religion in your schools, whereas in the other schools they do not. Would that be a fair statement? I think, in general, that's quite true. Now, then, it seems to me that from the time this country was founded, that religion has been taught and well taught in Sunday school systems, whereby the parents would educate their children in the public school system, and that they could go learn their religion in the Sunday schools by their ministers or priests or whatever it may be. I agree with your history. I agree with your history. Hasn't Matter that worked out pretty good for this country? Your Honor, I'm going to object to that line of interrogation. This attorney is arguing with the witness and not giving him an opportunity to answer these questions. This is cross-examination, but Mr. Barger allowed the witness to complete his answer. Very well, Your Honor. I agree with your history, Mr. Barger. This has happened in the past, and it's even happening today. In some states where the Catholic Church is unable to build high schools, we use release time. Take, a children out, uh, to take children out of public schools in order to teach them religion. We take them on Sundays in Sunday schools. But this is not understanding the total process of education. Well, how can we relegate religion to a Sunday school class uh, and teach something else five days a week? Doesn't this, uh, in the child's mind, uh, place religion in a lower uh, class of emphasis as far as importance and necessity are concerned? Why well, teach a child mathematics five days a week? and a half hour every, and teach religion only a half hour a week. He must be taught religion every day. As a matter of fact, religion has as much intellectual content and creates uh, just as much of a challenge as far as the child's mind is concerned as does mathematics. It's occurred to me that the other faiths have been well able to accomplish their objectives of educating their people in line with their faiths through a Sunday school system, through teaching at home, through the parents. Isn't that good enough for the Catholic system? Uh, quite frankly, I have to say no. To teach religion formally and systematically, uh, a, such a tremendous body of doctrine demands daily teaching. And it demands that that teaching be done in conjunction with the teaching of other subjects. Teaching the whole child. Teaching him that he is as much a spiritual or moral person as he is intellectual person. Thank you, Father. Mr. Meehan, have you anything on redirect? I certainly have, Your Honor. May proceed. Father Curtin, in your previous testimony, you used the word accreditation. Uh, I'm not sure I understand that, and perhaps the jury doesn't either. Would you, would you tell me what that means? Well, very briefly, <coughs> Mr. Mean, it's this. There are official bodies, educational bodies, such as the State Department of Missouri and the University of Missouri and the North Central Association, which set up certain regulations for the uh, proper conduct of high schools. Now, if a school can meet these regulations as set up by these official bodies, they will uh, approve them and accept them as uh, qualified schools, as good schools. Uh, therefore, in the process of accreditation, uh, a school applies to the university, as in our case, or to the uh, State Department, in the case of other schools, and to a regional uh, association, the North Central, which covers 19 states, and asks that their uh, uh, whole program from teachers to curriculum to activities be investigated to see whether or not they meet the requirements or the standards. And if they do, they ask to be accepted. This is accreditation. Well, now, bearing that in mind, it occurs to me then from your other testimony that you use many books that are used in other schools, do you not? Yes, we do, Mr. Mayor. What about your faculty? Are there laymen on your faculty? We have a large number of laymen today in our high schools. Let me talk to you for just a moment about this item of cost that Mr. Barge brought up. Uh, this cost of sending a Catholic student to a Catholic high school, how is that exactly born? Who pays that cost? Uh, in virtually all of our schools, a good percentage of it, a great percentage of it, is borne by the parents who send the children to school. The rest of it is borne by the people of the archdiocese, the Catholic people of the archdiocese. Well, what do they do, Father Curtin? They contribute uh, uh, through their parishes, and also they contri contribute each year through a one drive which is held throughout the city. Uh, they also contribute uh, to the, the school when the school has uh, uh, emergency uh, demands w which it mu must meet. The big thing is the parent does not pay the total cost. The diocese or the people of the archdiocese, the Catholic people, must step in and help the school. Well, Father Curtin, what's this business about a subsidization of the uh, religious artists? What's, the, what's that mean? The ones that teach in the schools? Well, that boils down to something like this, Mr. Meehan. Uh, if uh, a, a sister teaching in a school does not draw a salary, she draws a small sustenance, enough to, uh, to, to take care of her simple wants and needs. 
This, as compared to the public schools, uh, uh, amounts to something like this, a tremendous uh, differential between what we have to pay for a teacher or what we have to give a teacher in sustenance and what the public schools have to pay by way of salary. Now that difference to us is a subsidy, a, a subsidy, and it amounts to many thousands of dollars a year. As a matter of fact, this is one of the real reasons why we've been able to continue our high schools and why they've been able to grow. Well, Father, I have, I have just one or two more questions, and one is very important. Now, you told us that you have religion courses in your schools. Now, you also have courses designed to develop the moral personality, the moral uh, essence of the individual. Is it, is it possible now, Father, that you can take a boy who has a better than average intelligence, train him in the math and the sciences that are offered in high schools, and also give him this religious training, this moral training? We can do that, I think, very uh, effectively, particularly with boys of that type. We have our schools now uh, broken down or reorganized into what we call the three-track cur uh, curriculum. As a matter of fact, the public schools of St. Louis and our Catholic high schools are following the same program, three tracks. Uh, the very bright student can be given a concentration of English, math, and science, and at the same time, a concentration of, of uh, the study of religion or the study of uh, uh, religious content. And this can continue down through the students who are below those who are exceptionally bright and to those who are even below those, or these latter. The point here is that we keep the student uh, supplied with studies which will <coughs> tax him to his maximum for the, for, as far as his capacity or competency is concerned. Well, fine. Father Curtin, thanks very much for those answers. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Bourget. Father, it would seem to me, from having heard your testimony here, that the church's position probably in this matter is that you need the schools in order to keep, keep the Catholic Church in existence. No more than the, uh, the, uh, the country needs its public schools to keep democracy alive. We exist as a part of the community of schools to perpetuate the ideals of a democratic society, to perpetuate the ideals of which we, in which we believe, which are written for us in the Constitution. As far as the religious life of the child is concerned, we exist to enrich, uh, to develop and enrich that life. We're interested in the child, in the individual child, and in, in this uh, society of child, that they may be developed uh, through formal education to be perfect uh, 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 young men and young women, not only intellectually, but morally and spiritually. Well, in line with that, Father, it's only a small percentage of children who graduate from high school go on to college. Would that be right? Nationally, about 20%. With us, we get about, in this area, we get about 30, 35%. So that the high school is the college uh, for Our most people's people, colleges, that's, that's the right. people's college. That's right, Mr. Bush. Now, do you teach any vocational training in the high schools that you run, such as the carpentry or the trades? Do you teach anything like that in order to prepare a boy so that he can go out and earn his living when he gets out of your high school? No, we don't. We don't teach trades as such. We teach uh, uh, vocational preparation in that we train the child mentally and as far as his attitudes are concerned and as far as his social behavior is concerned, to, to take a job and to work with some economic security or to work in, a, in, in an area with economic security. How to get along with, a man, uh, with, with an employer? What is an employer? What, what's a job? What, uh, what does a job entail? I mean, job in general. This, this type of general thing is a much better preparation, we feel, than a, to train a child specifically to be, say, a sheet metal worker when he winds up driving a bus ten, uh, ten years later or to be a plumber when he can't get into the plumber's union and so on and so forth. Well, in any event, you don't feel that that's proper to teach in a high school, is that right? We feel that there's, uh, in our schools, there's no place for vocational education as trades. Now, insofar as the operation or running of your schools is concerned, all the power is vested in you. The parents don't have any power over what is taught or anything about your schools, do they? Not at all. Uh, the parents have a lot of power through their parent-teacher organizations. We have parent-teacher organizations organized on a national scale just as the public schools do. In this diocese, we have a diocesan guild of parent-teachers associations, and they meet frequently with school administrators to lay before them what they would like to see taught, what they don't like being taught. Uh, in other words, they lay before them their gripes. And well, there's yes. a meeting of minds on the difficulties which arise in school administration. Now, you've testified concerning books. As a matter of fact, you're the final decider over what book is used in the school, aren't you? Not at all. When you deal with some uh, 1,500 teachers, you don't make uh, uh, autocratic decisions. Those decisions have to be, must be made in the field amongst the teachers who are constantly seeking the best teachable text. 
in any one of the subjects uh, that are taught in high school. So this is a process of filtration where teachers uh, analyze books and filter in information to central committees where the books are e eventually uh, selected. Mm -hmm. I think that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Bourget, would you ask the witness how many Catholic high schools there are in the metropolitan area here? Well, how many schools do you have, Father? We have uh, 44 high schools with an enrollment of uh, 18,000 uh, students. Thank you. That's right. Now, the summation. How much time will you take, gentlemen? Will you proceed? Thank you, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I think that in spite of the testimony of the witness here today, we have before us a situation that is not in line with the democratic principles of this country. Ever since the country was founded, religion has been taught in Sunday schools. It's been taught by the parents at home. And it seems to me that it, is, it has grown and has fostered itself and has become the proper way to teach religion. It would seem to me further that our public schools are being deprived of the benefit of many of these children who are spending their time in Catholic schools. If we had this consolidated into one system, with the religion being taught on Sunday in the schools or in the churches as they see fit, that we would have a much better society uh, for ourselves and for our children. We wouldn't have these children separated in their teenagers according to religion or because they are Catholics, they're in one school and because they are not Catholics, they're in another. I think that in line with the principles of our way of life, with the democratic way of life, that it would be much better if we did not have a Catholic school system or a private school system, but if we were uh, totally in keeping with the one idea of a public school system where it's equal education for all. Thank you. Mr. Meehan. Thank you, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, let me summarize for you, if I may, what the evidence is that you have heard today in this court. Now, Father Curtin has testified here as to the objectives of Catholic education. He said, in a sense, they are the same as other high school education systems. But he said something else is added. They add an emphasis upon moral teaching. They add an emphasis on the development of the religious thinking and the religious background of the people that come before them as high school students. Now, there's been adequate testimony that the faculties, the facilities, the system of preparation of books, of extracurricular programs in the schools is not only adequate, not only comparable to what's found in other high school systems, but that it does a fine job, an excellent job. The testimony has come from this witness stand to the effect that we have prepared students we have prepared them to go to college. We've trained them so that they could go out into the community and be responsible citizens, fathers, members of your neighborhood organizations. We train students to participate in the full life of the citizen. We have definitely demonstrated by this evidence that the Catholic high school has a right to exist, has performed a function that is checked on by the public authorities. We have indicated to you that this cost is borne first by the church and then equally, in a sense, by the Catholic parent. This is not a burden of the society. The testimony clearly shows that this is a contribution to the society. Thousands upon thousands of high school students are graduated every year from Catholic high schools. They go out into your businesses, into your factories, into your colleges. Afterwards, they may go into the armed services. They grow up in your neighborhoods. They develop families alongside yours. And you know that they are the equal of you as citizens, equal to you as God-fearing men. There evidently is a well-placed case before you today. I ask for your verdict for the Catholic high school. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the proponent, the Catholic high school, started out here this afternoon to prove its reason for existence in our society, the purposes for which it continues to exist and from the testimony indicated grow you've heard from the defendant side the John Q public arguments against the continuance of this Catholic high school way well the reasons pro and con in the privacy of your jury room, and I know you'll render a proper verdict.
Thank you, Father Curtin. Thank you, Judge Motherway. Thank you, Mr. Meehan. Thank you, Mr. Barger. This afternoon, the Catholic High School has been on trial on challenge. Next Sunday, we will not have a challenge, but two weeks from today, on November 23rd, the St. Louis County Public Schools will present the challenge, should there be equality of education in the county? Should there be equality of education in the county? With Mr. Burton Sawyer, school board member of the Kirkwood Public Schools, presenting the case for tax equalization. So we hope you'll join us on challenge two weeks from today after the game, November 23rd. Until then, this is Parker Wheatley suggesting that we all keep thinking more and more about education. Challenge was presented today by the Catholic Radio and Television Apostolate in cooperation with the KMOX-TV Department of Public Affairs.